welcome back to my channel. We obviously have a new addition and I'm so happy she's finally here and it's actually really crazy because she was born four weeks ago. I cannot believe it's already been four weeks. I'm also sorry if it's really echoey in here. I'm in our office space but there's absolutely nothing in this room besides a desk and a computer so it's just super echoey so I hope the audio is okay but I wanted to talk about my labor and birth story and everything that happened giving birth to this little one. Everyone has such different experiences and when I was pregnant, I really liked watching other labor stories, especially positive ones, because I know that as much as you anticipate things going or you plan things to go a certain way or there are certain things that you would like to have happen, um, things don't always go that way and I think it just gave me a lot of peace of mind to know that even if things don't go the way that you kind of think it will um, doesn't mean it's going to be a negative experience so yeah I'm so happy hopefully she stays asleep while I do this video let's start from the beginning of my labor I actually was 40 weeks and six days I went into the hospital for what they call a post dates exam, which is the appointment that you have when you go past your due date. Um, they do a non-stress test, they do an ultrasound, and they run labs. Um, I had been to the hospital basically every two weeks up until that point for monitoring and NSTs because of my blood pressure. And ever since I was a teenager, my blood pressure has been just a little bit higher. So for me, it was really challenging to make decisions because I know like what's normal for me and like my blood pressure and my health. And it's just kind of weighing what I know is normal versus the bigger picture that you get from labs and obviously the NST and the ultrasound and Going from there, I personally felt comfortable giving myself some time after every hospital visit to, you know, go into labor on my own. Um, at the post dates exam though, when I was 40 weeks and 6 days, they did highly encourage me to schedule an induction. I went ahead and did that. Um, I went in for that appointment on a Friday and I scheduled the induction for Monday. And it's so funny because several hours after that appointment, I actually went into labor on my own April 1st and it was so shocking. I did not think I was going to go into labor on my own and I don't think I did anything special to make labor happen. I know a lot of women try to like encourage labor near the end, but before I did go into labor, I just been out walking like I had been, but nothing crazy or special that I did on that day to make it happen. I did have a cervical check at that appointment that morning, um, but I had them in the weeks prior, so I don't think there was anything special about that that made me go into labor. I did have a membrane sweep earlier in that week. My appointment was on a Friday, and I think I had the sweep done on a Monday, so I think it's safe to say the membrane sweep didn't work because of how much time went by, but on April 1st at 9.15, I was just laying in bed on TikTok, minding my own business, literally just laying there, not doing anything, and I just felt like a little gush, and it's a very similar feeling. This is like a very girly chat. Um, I apologize in advance. Um, but it felt very similar to like when you just have some discharge come out, but just a little bit more. It wasn't anything like I soaked the bed or it was just like I peed myself. It was just like a very strong gush and I was like, what the heck? And at the end of my pregnancy, I did have like more discharge, so I wasn't sure if that's what it was, but that's, it just felt different. So I went to the bathroom and I was like, hmm, I'm kind of confused and I decided to put a pad on and I was like soaking the pad. It didn't have any color or crazy smell or anything like that. So I'm like, okay, I'm pretty sure my water broke, but because there's no color or anything, I think we're good to just labor at home for a little bit. And that's what I tried to do. And it was so weird 
I was always under the assumption that when your water broke and you started labor that the contractions would start kind of slow and far apart but mine started like boom 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 they lasted for like a minute and a half and they were coming every three to five minutes they slowed down a little bit to every 11 minutes but they were so long and then they picked back up to being like three to five minutes apart and i was just like mm, i think i should go to the hospital because there's really no pattern here and I don't want things to go south while I'm at home. So we went to the hospital after I labored at home for about three hours. Um, so at like one in the morning, we go to the hospital. They check me and confirm that my water did break. So they got me all set up in a room. Oh, I wasn't even recording. Now it's recording. <laughs> yeah. So tell the people when your water broke. 9.15. Uh, January. January? <laughs> it is 1.50 a.m. April 2nd. I made it this long. They're just so close together, so long, that I didn't want to be at home. It's 2.55 a.m. I just had like two back to back. This is my situation. Just Having a contraction, huh? You can't see your face. And it was just such a long night. And I really wanted to experience like natural labor if I could, without any sort of intervention, pain medication, like the epidural, anything like that. And I labored for 16 hours without anything. I tried different positions. I really only used my plastic comb to grip in my hand. What you got going on? What's, what's your comb for? Comb your hair. Huh? To comb your hair. I would squeeze the comb as I was getting a contraction to basically distract myself from the pain. And it worked a little bit, but it's just so crazy how intense a contraction can feel. Update time. Move to a new room. Fancy room. I'm not going to show you, but how you doing? But just to touch on like my progress, I had been at one centimeter. 80% effaced since 37 weeks and I was one centimeter 80% effaced at my post dates exam that morning before my labor started um, and when I got to the hospital at one o'clock I was two centimeters and still 80% effaced I think she said and then after laboring for 16 hours um, they checked me and I was at three centimeters and I was like, oh my gosh, I cannot believe I labored for so long and I'm only at three centimeters. It's hard. It's a really hard mental challenge because they hurt so bad and I was trying so hard to just surrender to the pain and let my body do what it needed to do. But the pain is so intense. I'm not trying to scare anybody. I'm just being honest of like, I just wasn't prepared for how splitting up a pain it eventually became like when the contractions got stronger and there is Kate the Great in action this is terrible she said this is the most wonderful experience she's ever had it is 5.04 a.m. three and a half hours and this is where all the poops happen 
There's the pooper right there. squat position and it literally felt like I was being ripped in half. Yeah, it's now 9 a.m. Been here since 1.30 a.m. My labor started at 9 p.m. What are you doing now, Keelan? Contractions were getting really, really bad. At 16 hours, I think that was around one o'clock in the afternoon, I was so tired of just how painful they were and I didn't really have much of a break in between the contractions either. They were still very close together. I just felt like I couldn't recover in between them enough to like tolerate the next one a little bit better. But it was just like begging my nerves. I was like, I cannot feel another contraction. Like I do not want to feel another one of these. We did try nitrous oxide first and I did not like that because the nitrous oxide, we breathe it in with the mask. It was just a very cold air and it wasn't very pleasant to like breathe it in. It took kind of a lot of effort compared to just like normal breathing. So that didn't last very long. We did try IV pain medication and that made me feel like I was drunk and I didn't like that feeling and I didn't think it really helped with the pain either. And so then we quickly moved into placing the epidural and it I felt like it took forever for the anesthesiologist to come and do this epidural for me. I was like feeling the contractions. I'm like, when is she coming? I don't want to feel this anymore. Um, but they place the epidural and they place it while you're having a contraction. So like you need to be really still, but also because I'm having a contraction, I literally did not feel her do the epidural like at all. Um, but they did it and they lay you down. You get it placed sitting up and then they lay you down and I could still feel everything and like 10 minutes went by, I could still feel everything and the anesthesiologist was like, you should definitely feel some relief by now. And I'm like, no, I don't feel any relief. And so we actually had me sit back up and she basically did it again. And while she was doing it again, I started to not feel my feet. I'm like, well, now I'm starting to not feel you know, my feet and my legs. And she was like, huh, that's interesting like that you're feeling it now. But we went ahead and did it a second time, laid me down, and it started to work. And it was a beautiful thing to not feel the contractions anymore and to have a break and to rest a little bit. A beat. Hey, give him up, eight. Oh, I don't remember the last thing. What? It's, it's 9 o'clock. It's 9 o'clock? Yep. And it's now 2.24 p.m. Yes. 
So how long did you go without the Epidero? centimeters 45 minutes after they did the epidural I was at five centimeters so my midwife was very optimistic that the epidural alone was really going to get me to the finish line and I was really optimistic your body just tenses so much when you're contracting that I think I just wasn't really dilating because of that but now that I was relaxed I could dilate a little bit more so anyway 45 minutes after, I was at a 5, and then 2 hours later, I was at a 7. Upbeat. Yeah, now I'm just sitting like this. How dilated are you? 7. What do you have to get to, 10? It is 5.50 p.m. Going on hour. What hour? Is that 20 hours? 20 hours? Okay, she said to mix the ginger with any of the juices, but particularly I like the apple juice. And he's just like, not really sparkling on the side. But I'm really not feeling really anything. It was on my side, I think it's not just like a little bit. But like this, I really don't. But when it's something up like this, on me and she said that my contractions were starting to get further apart and not be as strong and I know that can be a normal part of labor for things to stall a little bit so I wasn't really concerned about it. It is now going on the third overlapping day. We're getting to the home stretch and we're tired. <laughs> You got the seven before you started the epidural. No, I sleep the whole day. I sleep the day. Oh no, I meant the pitocin before you started pitocin. It was a little bit high, it was a very low fever, um, so I didn't want to risk like an infection, especially if I had a little bit of a fever at that point. They checked me after a half. We were asleep for this a little bit. <laughs> you should appreciate the refreshing. It was like at 9 ish We 
went ahead and started a little bit of Pitocin and I was really nervous about using Pitocin because I heard that it just makes your contractions so much worse, so much stronger and I'm not sure if that really happened to me since I had the epidural but it definitely got things going a little bit more. Um, I would say I think two hours after they started the Pitocin on the lowest trip, um, I went from a 7 to an 8. So the midwife was really optimistic. She was really advocating for me to the um, OBGYN because at that point when you start the Pitocin, I think the OBGYN starts to get more involved. And they have their protocols of, you know, if you aren't progressing at this amount, it's like one centimeter every hour, then they would recommend a C-section. Um, but my midwife is so awesome. And it was actually a midwife I hadn't worked with before, and I'm just so happy I gave birth with her because she was incredible. I digress. I was at an eight when they checked me after they started the Pitocin, so she felt very encouraged that it would be enough for me. And sure enough, a couple hours later, she checked again, and she's like, you're fully dilated. Um, do you want to practice pushing? And I was like, practice pushing? I don't know what that exactly means. But Matt is like dead asleep and I'm like pushing a little bit and it's so weird because of the epidural like you can't really feel as much um, but leading up to practicing the push I wasn't doing my extra epidural I was just trying to really feel the contraction so that I could push with them and not against them if that makes sense so I could really feel quite a lot except for my legs. <laughs> yeah, we started pushing. She's like, okay, yeah, you're going to have this baby. And she's like, uh, dad, wake up. Like Matt is asleep. And she's like, grab a leg, grab a leg. And so Matt has one leg. One of the nurses has my other leg and we're just pushing. And I feel like I didn't push for very long. I would say max 30 minutes, maybe like seven to ten rounds of pushing and then she was out and it's just so crazy to think that like I pushed her out of me. It was so wild. Oh, and then when I gave birth to her, she immediately pooped and peed on me, which is nice. As they're like laying her on me and we're doing the cord and stuff, um, I did have a first degree tear. The midwife said it wasn't that bad. It was just one stitch and it was on the inside, it wasn't like an external tear, she said. It was just on the inside, one stitch. I tried to like, you know, like after I went home and stuff, try to look and see, but I really can't tell where it was or where the stitches or anything like that. So um, because I had the epidural, I didn't feel her like really stitching things up. And then as I had her on me, baby on me, I pushed out the placenta, which was really weird because with the baby, I like, could feel something to push out the placenta. I'm just like, mm, like pushing and I'm like, is anything coming out? Like I'm not exactly sure how this works. It came out eventually, but it's super weird. After I gave birth to her, as I mentioned earlier, I had issues with my blood pressure and they were taking it after delivery and it was um, pretty high. It was over 160, over 110, it was above that. And so that is criteria to meet um, for preeclampsia. So they started the magnesium drip and oh my gosh, like this is the part of labor that like, I just didn't expect of like the magnesium drip. Like after delivery, my, my back was hurting from the epidural. Um, my lady bits down there didn't feel great. I was very tired and the magnesium makes your body feel like it's on fire. All my organs felt like they were on fire. I was sweating really bad and I was just in so much discomfort that I was like crying. I was like, I, I cannot take this. And they just do such a high dose at first to get the blood pressure down. And then after that, they do a little bit less, but oh my gosh, it did not feel very good. It overall wasn't bad. Like, I tell Matt that if we have another baby, if I have the exact same birth and labor experience, like I honestly wouldn't be mad about it. I could do without the magnesium and like the blood pressure issues that I had. Overall, everything else was positive, even though 
it didn't go to plan. Like I didn't plan on getting an epidural or using Pitocin at all. Anyway, all the nurses were just so helpful, especially the nurse after I gave birth because all the bodily fluids and the fact that I couldn't go to the bathroom and we had to do the bedpan. Like this nurse really saw the ugliest side of me and she was just wonderful. Like she was always one step ahead of something that I needed and it was just a really good experience. So I'm just really thankful for that. Update. It is 7.46 a.m. April 3rd. Smile. This is a thumbnail. Unfortunately, with my blood pressure, I did have to stay in the hospital for a whole week after I gave birth. It was a huge bummer just trying to tweak the medications and get my blood pressure down. I'm just glad that we're all healthy and safe. I feel like I've lived a million years. I feel like there's still a baby inside me and I'm just feeling like Anyways, we should be able to go home in 24 hours at least. Maybe this max. maybe this evening. Gosh, I gave birth to her yesterday. It was like birth and then chaoticness with the freaking magnesium mm -hmm. and my pain and we were just doing my medication for the 24 hours and that's over. But my blood pressure is still not. You want to tell them how deep I sleep? Oh my gosh. He sleeps so hard. I only, I only need him when I'm done feeding her and I want him to put her into the bassinet so I don't have to get up. I think this time I was going to get ready to feed her and I came back from the bathroom and I was getting ready to go into bed and I was like, Matt, 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 and I'm just like yelling your name. I did not know how to wake you up and so I like have the ice pack that the nurse gave me. <laughs> I didn't like throw it angrily at you but I tossed it to you and it landed in your lap. And you were like, oh my gosh, he had the nerve to wake up and be pissed off. I and like, mad. you were like, I'm awake. And I'm like, no, you're not. <laughs> and you got up so fast and so agitated, like, I'm awake. What? And I'm like, calm down. I don't need you, like, frantically awake. I just need you to wake up. Mm -hmm. But I literally don't know how to wake you up. Without throwing something at you. Mm -hmm. This is our final update. After six days in the hospital, we're going home. How do you feel? I also didn't want the epidural because I just had heard so many things about it not working or it stops working or it only works for half the body and I was just so nervous that it wasn't going to work, but it turned out perfectly fine. The Pitocin experience was perfectly fine. I didn't have any issues, but this is little baby Avery. Mom's tired, baby. My camera died on me, but I just wanted to wrap up this video and say thank you guys for all the well wishes for me and little Avery and for following along on my pregnancy and just being so supportive of this whole journey. If you have any questions about my labor or birth experience, I'd be happy to answer. Now I'm excited to be in postpartum and to recover and to find a new normal again. So I'm excited to take you guys along on that too. But I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys next time.